The time period during the Civil Rights Movement had riots, protesters, and voices being heard. The Civil Rights Movement changed the nation. Gloria Richardson, the leader of the Cambridge Movement during January of 1963, it was a movement that led to the integration of Cambridge, Maryland through peaceful protest. Gloria Richardson was born on May 6, 1922. She grew up in Cambridge, Maryland. Gloria Richardson is a civil rights activist that led to the Cambridge Movement in Cambridge, Maryland. The movement was started by a group of high school and grammar students by an organization called the SNCC, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Gloria's daughter, Donna, was a part of the group. Then later on, Gloria and other parents organized the CNAC, Cambridge Nonviolent Action Committee, to target the desegregation of Cambridge. The division line of the segregation of Cambridge, Maryland was Ray Street. Pine Street was primarily for African Americans, while the other side of Ray Street was for white people. When Gloria was at a press conference, she said the African Americans have a chance to integrate. On June of 1963, the mayor of Cambridge asked Gloria to stop the demonstration. In exchange, he wanted to arrest the protesters. The following week, violent riots erupted. The mayor forced the National Guard to help. Gloria halts the demonstration by putting her arms up, and the National Guard has his arms up too. Gloria pushes away the National Guard bayonet. They are forcing to arrest the protesters. Gloria and the 80 other protesters were all arrested by the National Guard. The arrested group are being taken to Pikesville, Maryland. This is because of the demonstration that had happened. On August 23, 1963, the March on Washington was for civil activists. Before the march, Gloria became friends with Malcolm X. She worked with his organization, the OAAU, Organization of Afro-American Unity, but, in, but it counteracted with organizations to liberate the black movement. Malcolm X really befriended Gloria for no reason. He wanted to use her for the march. He told Gloria she was going to do a speech. Gloria and other women were on the program, but only one lady could speak. Only Gloria got to say was hello. And we had been in a little shoe shine shop with General Galston with him trying to stop, tell us no, and we're trying to say yes, we're going to do it when a whole lot of I, we thought they were bullets. I don't know what he thought. He may have known what it was, but it happened to be tear gas. But when we, I rushed out, and all the people were in the street, and then this guy was started coming toward me. I thought he's got to be crazy, <laughs> and and I don't I don't even know why I pushed the gun, but I know I was furious at that time. But so back to August 28th, you're asked to speak, you all go on buses to yes, Washington. Yes, I went to the hotel, went, we went, had hotel accommodations, and they came and got me I, and to take me to the march. I was late, but that wasn't because of me, they had to, and took me to the tent. When I got to the tent, the women were all there. They, they got up after a while and said they were going to the ladies' room and would be back. So I sat and waited for them to come back. In the meantime, I was doing some interviews, but then all of a sudden, Bear Rustin popped up and said, what are you doing sitting here in the tent? And I said, I'm sitting here waiting, and explained to him that I was sitting here waiting for the Oh no, he said, come go with me. So I went, he took me through the crowd uh, to the stage. And that's when- There you saw Lena, Lena Horn. Horn and Josephine Baker was really, I was really like, the great oh, singer. wow, <laughs> yes. And they said to me, uh, they've taken your chair away. Well, it proved they had chairs for the women, I guess. In Washington, Martin Luther King Jr. argued all African Americans should have the same rights as a white. After the March on Washington, Cambridge had a big rally on July 23rd, 1967. During that rally, H. Rat Brown and my grandfather's police partner, Russell E. Burton both were shot. On Pine Street, the elementary school was on fire. The National Guard had to be sent to Cambridge again to restore order. 
H. Rod Brown is a part of the Panther Party, also the chairman of the SNCC since 1967. On March 10th, Brown was arrested for bombing the Dorchester County Circuit Court. Brown was arrested for blowing up the Dorchester County Circuit Courthouse. And as a result of that, his, uh, his attorney wanted to be sure that he got a fair trial. So he requested a change of venue. And the change of venue means that he wanted to remove the court case from Dorchester County and have it held in another area. So as a result of that, Dorchester County Circuit Court judge approved that and they moved it to Bel Air, Maryland. Okay. All right. While the trial was scheduled to begin, and a friend or an associate, I'm not exactly sure who they were, were on the way to the Bur uh, Bel Air Courthouse to blow that up. On their way, the bomb exploded in their vehicle, killing the man. Okay. Stone and William Payne. H. Rod Brown disappeared for a year and a half before being arrested for five years of robbery. After his release from prison, he changed his name and opened a grocery store in Atlanta, Georgia. Regarding the bombing of Dorchester County Circuit Courthouse, an attempt was made to determine the court finding relative to the arrest of H. Rat Brown. After an extensive search of court records, no information could be found. As a result, the former chief of Cambridge Police Department, Rosalie Rutten, was contacted regarding the outcome of the trial, but he couldn't provide any additional information. For the Cambridge movement, it led to the Treaty of Cambridge. In the local Dorchester County newspaper article, Gloria said, Please fight for our freedom and let us know that we are not going away in vain. The treaty was to put an end in segregation and violence. Now, Gloria says, Cambridge may not be perfect, but there is a big difference from then to today. Although the strikes and riots in Cambridge, Maryland during the 1960s was stressful to both black and white communities, the sacrifices made during this time has resulted in all residents now living in harmony and enjoying everything Cambridge has to offer. <laughs>